Hello fellow Amiga users, I'm Bill. I'm Anthony and we are the Guru Meditation. We're here at World Maker Fair 2015. Yep, and we're here with our new pal. Looking at great exhibits, this place is amazing. You have tents full of just amazing things. More 3D printers than you could ever imagine. You could make a whole house, make a whole apartment building with the 3D printers they got here. But the best thing they got? We've got an emulation demo upstairs. We're repping the Commodore Amiga 500. The other guys in the March group have some other awesome computers we're gonna go check out. So we're here at the Maker Fair, and we're at the March booth, the Mid-Atlantic Retro Computer Hobbyists. And I'm standing here with Evan Koblenz, who's the president of the club. Evan, why don't you tell us a little bit about the display today? Sure, what we're showing here is uh, real versus Memorex, so to speak. We have a selection of eight and 16-bit microcomputers from the 70s and 80s. And uh, individually, they were all cutting edge for their time. However, on these cheap $50 modern Android tablets, we're running all of them under simple emulation software. So we're showing then versus now what you can do with modern technology. It's, uh, it's a really cool exhibit, and uh, there's a lot more to March than just this exhibit. You guys have a permit installation down in New Jersey, right? Right, March is a 10-year-old uh, nonprofit, uh, and we're basically like an antique car club. We do computers. We have our own museum in the Jersey Shore, and uh, InfoAge Science Center in Wall Township. And at the museum, these sort of computers are the newest and smallest of what we do. Uh, Amiga is cutting edge for us. <laughs> we go back to mainframes and mini computers the size of huge rooms in the 50s and 60s, and we're all about getting and running and working, and they're all donated. It's a great cause. You know, it's so funny. Like I see people come around the corner here at the show, and their eyes just light up when they see these machines. They're like, wow, like, there's the computer that I had when I was a kid. This computer changed my life. I learned how to program on this computer, and, you know, and now I'm in the IT field. Like, I learned how to edit photos on the Amiga, and now I'm in the photography and video business. So these computers really mean a lot to a lot of people, and keeping them alive is, is a really great cause that you guys do. So thank you. Thank you for having us. So here we have the Amiga 500. This was the most popular Amiga that Commodore sold. It was the second machine, successor to the 1000, very uh, just a cost-reduced version of it. And running here on this tablet with UAE for All 2, we have this basically the same juggler demo. This was a classic demo back in the day to show off ray tracing. That the Amiga was the, one of the first personal machines that could actually do ray tracing which is uh, that you don't actually draw the pictures, you create objects, and you let the computer decide how the object looks based on light reflecting off different pieces of the image. The Amiga also is emulating something, and that's emulating a floppy drive with uh, the GoTech that's become very popular. These are little floppy emulators that use USB sticks let you plug it into the computer where the floppy drive used to go and instead of using fragile disks that are getting older and the magnetic media is uh, starting to wear out you throw disk images on a USB stick and you boot the machine up and it has no concept that it uh, doesn't have an actual physical three and a half inch floppy drive. So I'm here with Jeff at the Atari 800 exhibit. Now Jeff, the Atari is a really special computer for me because it was the first computer that I ever owned and it's pretty amazing. I, I learned recently that the 800 stands for $800 and the 400 stands for $400. So it just it blows my mind that my dad was able to, you know, afford an $800 computer for me back in the early 80s. Wow. So I feel really lucky to have had this machine. It's running Load Runner right now. Yes. Classic. Yes, Load Runner. <laughs> and uh, what's, what what about the emulator here? Uh, the emulator is called Colleen. Um, that's the uh, it's an Android uh, emulator for the Atari, and you load the disk images with that, that emulator. Cool, and is uh, the actual 800 running floppies right now? So this one is actually booting from floppy. It actually has the load runner on a real floppy disk and it's loading into a straight 800. It's amazing, some of the people that come through the show here have never seen a floppy disk before. And yes. they're like, wow, I've heard of floppy disks. <laughs> and I saw a thing on the internet recently, someone had a floppy disk and they're like, wow, dad, you 3D printed the save icon. Yes, <laughs> the three and a half inch. Yeah, I'll show people, yes, this is how you can uh, you can store your, your games and your files and everything on, on a real floppy disk. And the, the other thing that's pretty interesting for me, being an Amiga guy, about the Atari, is that uh, Jay Miner, who's the father of the Amiga, also had a big hand in the Atari 8-bit computers. Uh, he designed the uh, Antic chip, which is the video chip 
in the 800 and the 400 8-bit series. Oh, wow, that's, that's yeah. very interesting. And then he uh, went on to make High Toro. High Toro became Amiga, and then they got bought by Commodore. So I kind of moved from the 800 to the Amiga and didn't even know I was following J Minor the whole oh, way. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, because like, we, the reason we also have the 800s in a museum is we wanted to emphasize that Atari just didn't make video games, because the people mostly know about the Atari 2600, which is just a video game system. But the 800 is actually a fully functional computer. You can do word processing and spreadsheets and not just games. Cool. That's All right, the Jeff, whole th point. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. So, Corey, I see here an Apple IIe. Tell us a little bit about what we got here. So what we're showing here today is an Apple IIe and an emulator of an Apple IIe running on an Android tablet. This Apple IIe is actually uh, running a modern USB uh, drive inside so that we can have a whole bunch of different uh, programs for people to use. Normally they would use five and a quarter inch floppy. The Apple IIe uh, was pretty much the most popular Apple II model. It's really when Apple got in its groove and started producing millions of these things. Most schools went out and bought a lot of them because they gave a very large discount. So many people's first experiences with a computer was on an Apple IIe in school. And the idea was, if you used it in school, you'd come home and buy it for your own home. And now, uh, what emulator is running on the Android tablet? Uh, this is Kegs, which is the most popular emulator for running Apple II on a tablet or on your iPhone. Uh, we're running Donkey Kong here, which you know most people know from Nintendo, you know Mario. So it's a pretty popular game. And if you want to play it, and you don't have like an old Nintendo machine, load your emulator up, load a Commodore emulator, an Atari emulator, an Apple emulator, and you can play Donkey Kong and enjoy the first time we saw Mario running around. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Cool, so I'm here with Doug, and Doug's got a TRS-80 Model 3. Uh, let's check this baby out. All right, yeah, this is a fully loaded uh, 48K, 48,000 byte of memory uh, Z80 computer. Uh, decked out with dual floppy disk drives, right? This was from 1980. The predecessor machine was the Model 1. So these are almost the same. That was a few years earlier. But in 79, so one year before this machine came out, the special effects folks on Star Trek, the motion picture, used a Model 1 to generate screens for the sets. So the screens that were generated for the original Star Trek movie were done with this TRS-80. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, a, a number of them. Uh, so here's a screenshot that, that I actually put off of YouTube where I found this display behind Captain Kirk right here. That's so cool. And then around the web I found people had grabbed other screens that are very similar, were probably built um, maybe not from this piece of software, but, uh, but certainly from a Model 1. And so... The code that's running here is basic, and it was available from a magazine back in 1980. So that is the year this machine came out. I remember buying magazines and typing all the code in from yeah. the back of the magazine. I was <laughs> right. It was a long process, but you learned a lot. It was fun. <laughs> and look at the list. Look at the size of this thing. And this this code was was in the magazine, so somebody did type it in wow. <laughs> from the magazine. But the article is very good talking about the whole history of, of what happened on set and stuff. So. Oh, cool. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what emulator are you running? Uh, I never heard of a TRS-80 emulator before. There's one TRS-80 emulator that is available on Android, downloadable right off the Play Store. Um, it has a picture of a Model 1 monitor on it, so you can't miss it. Well, thanks, Doug. You're so welcome. It. Yeah. Good time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Jeff, of course, I think most people will know what machine this is. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the Commodore 64 you have here? So we have a Commodore 64, and next to it we have an Android tablet. And it's running Frodo, which is the emulator for the Android. For demonstration purposes, I'm using an SD card because real disk drives are not reliable. And I've had four of them go bad. 
All right, so I understand this is the best-selling single computer of all time. Yes, different people have different estimates. I mean, that's a matter of debate. But the fact is, it sold more than any individual type of computer. Their estimates are between 17 and 30 million. In fact, Commodore wanted to stop production on this, but they had to restart it five times because there was such a huge demand for this machine. They had a very good advantage. They, were make, they had their own chip fabrication facility, and they made a new chip, a VIC chip, video chip, VIC-2, and a SID chip, a sound chip, which were much different than anything else ahead of the time. So the combination of a good sound, good graphics, 64K of RAM, an easy to use screen editor, the combination of that and the low costs made it very appealing to people. Oh, great, thanks a lot. You're welcome. So tell us what machine we have here. So actually what we have here is an IBM PC Junior. Now uh, the PC Junior was considered a flop. Uh, IBM sold like a half a million of these things. And the big joke is it took Tandy Corporation, Radio Shack, to make a successful PC Junior. The Tandy 1000, which went on to dominate the PC industry or the compatible industry in the late 80s, was actually designed as a PC Junior compatible. And there was a big panic at the last minute uh, because IBM announced the cancellation of the Junior about two to three weeks before the announcement of the Tandy 1000. Tandy changed their marketing and went on to have the most successful PC compatible of the 1980s. Now it was designed for the home and some of the things that you see here, like a wireless keyboard, the idea was you'd plug in your PC Junior, hook it up to your television set and sit on your couch and play games or go out and do things like, you know, um, you know type word processors and stuff like that. Well, I'm assuming this machine's too old for Bluetooth, so what wireless did it use? It used infrared just like a regular remote control. It has two infrared sensors. Uh, yes, no Bluetooth. They did let you plug in a keyboard. But what bothered people was the idea of batteries. So people didn't like having to use batteries in their keyboard. Tell us a little bit about the emulator now running on Android. So we're actually just running DOSBox on here, but this is actually Windows 1.0. So this is the first release of Windows, which this November, just a little bit over a month from now, will be 30 years old. And Windows was never actually released as a 1.0 release to the public. 1.01 was the first release in November 1985. Oh, very interesting. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Wow, man, that was an awesome show. My favorite part was seeing people's faces as they came around the turn, saw the Amiga and said, wow, there's the computer I grew up with. Well, you know, the amazing thing is that's probably exactly the same look that we get when we turn these machines on. People were bringing their kids over and they said, look, this is the computer that mom and dad used when we were your age. Absolutely. Now, the only problem with great shows is they have to come to an end. And this big robot is about to escort us out of here. So we just want to say thank you for watching.